That way okay. you can have it. I can send it to you. Now let's try the screen share one more time and see what happens. Still the Do same screen. I don't, all I see is the Zoom screen for some odd reason. You want both of us to back. All I see is your Zoom screen. So you, no. still don't see, you don't see anything that says ZXP Realty? No. It says I'm sharing my screen with you. Mm hmm Okay, let me try one. Let it's just showing the Zoom meeting screen, like, like when you, you first it? log in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let me turn this down. Okay, so this is so this is where your RPR screen is. So just walk, look at through. I'm gonna walk you through it. So give me the address of the property. Six seven three two Woodley W O O D L E Y. Yes. Once you start typing that in, it comes in. You know that's the one you select that. So you click search. So it shows you basically what the um, lease price is, is one sixty four nine hundred, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So let me, let, me, let me do my video as well so you can see me. So facial expression will help you out as well. So you see the lease price, you see the AVM. The AVM is just the automated um, um, valuation that the system is giving you. So you go to create. And basically right at the top of the here, it says property summary. Mm -hmm. it, it tells you how long it's been on the market. It tells you the date that it was listed. It gives you the price, you know, and a few other pertinent information like the square footage and all that kind of good stuff. It tells you it's got three bedrooms and two baths and it was built in 1929. Then you have the create, which is the, com the, uh, the comparative analysis is just an estimate that is based on comps or you can do the sales comparison analysis. The sales comparison analysis is a little bit more detailed and is much more realistic. So that's the one I use. But you can always study up on that and read up on that. It tells you what the differences are. All you gotta do is just click that and it's gonna tell you what the differences are. You can even get a video, watch a video, you know, just a, a breakdown, right? But for the purpose of what we're trying to do, so we're gonna do the um, sales comparison analysis. Then you're gonna click on confirm facts. This page, if there's anything that is specific to the property because now you've been to the property you've seen the property you know i mean from what you saw now you know whether it's actually three bedrooms that is in the house or if it's four bedrooms or you know um they may have listed as two baths but does it really have two full baths you know so you can make the changes over here so you can add those things here you know but again straight away from the two more details of you know overloading the system the main thing you want to do is basically just look at the one with the asterisks to make sure that it's listed correct correctly. Uh, it's listed as a townhome, or, you know, condo, townhouse. If that's correct, that's fine. If it's not, then you just drop it down and change it, you know, to really what it, it truly is. Bedrooms, if the bedrooms is correct, there are three. Yes. You don't need to do anything. If it's four, then you change it here. But if it's not, don't do anything if it's correct. Total baths, if that's correct, you know, this one is saying that it's go uh, one, one and a half, one, one full bath. Actually, no, he's saying that he's got two full baths. Is that correct? Yes. Or is it one full bath and one half bath? Two full. Okay, does he have an half bath or no? No, it's two full bathroom. Okay, so then all that information is correct. Then next thing you just do is just do confirm facts and you move on to the next. It takes you out to find comps. So now you want to find the comps. So you want, but what you want to try and do is you want to find comps that are as similar to this property as possible. I, I tend to go for something that is within a 10 year range, meaning um, if I can find properties that was built in 1929, that are very similar to this, I'll do that. If, I, if I've got to go you know, all the way to 1939, or if I've got to go all the way back to 1919, I'll do that. But I want something closest to that time frame as best as possible. Then you go come over here. It's already defaulted to some of the things that are similar to that property. But what you want to do is you want to also pick on under contract. Okay, so you're looking for things that are sold, you're looking for things that are under contract, you're looking for things that are pending, and also that is active. 
Aztec within six months, and I go to one mile radius of the property, of your subject property. If you don't, if you end up not finding enough, then you can extend it to two, two mile radius, you know, or you can come up here and go, you know, 12 months out if you need to. But initially starting, keep it within six months, keep it within a, 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 a one mile radius. Then you click on search. So once you click on search, it's telling you right off the bat that there are 20 sold properties found that you can use. Then at the, if you go all the way down a little bit to the middle, you have nine for sale or pending that you can use. So we have a good sample that we should be able to find what's going to be close. So now you try and find, so you start from the top. The system already picked something out for you here. You know, it says to use this one because this is very close to the property. It's a three bedroom, two bath, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we have. Three bedroom, two bath, built in 1929. This was built in 1929 as well. Uh, what's the address? 67? So yeah, the one that we did, 732, this one that is being used is actually 6734. So, so right next door. Cool. Yeah. Now, let me ask you one question. Are there any updates on the property that you're looking at? Yes. Are they doing updates to it? Yes. Or is it, or, okay. So, because they did updates to it, this right here may not be a perfect reflection. But what you want to do is you, want, you, you really want to look at when was it sold, right? Mm -hmm. You want to look at, you know, the year. You want to look at the square footage. This is very similar to that property, 2320. You almost can say they're identical. But the one thing that is a flag for me right off the bat is this is November, this is October. We're almost in November, right? Today's the last day of October. But this particular property was sold in May of this year, but it sold for 95000 There's got to be a reason why that is the case. Because, I mean, uh, five months ago, uh, well, yeah, about four or about four, five months ago, right? Mm -hmm. This property was sold about four or five months ago. Market was a little bit different then. So that, those are the things that you want to think at the back of your head. And also... You don't want to, you, you really don't want to start going and tell, let me see the details, what's done on this property. But if you click that details, it could give you an idea. But you see, nothing is really listed at the bottom there that could give you that much. But one thing sticks out, cooling, none. So these little things just give me an idea and making me think that even though this is next door, this property may have been, when it was purchased, it may have been, a total rehab. It may have been something that you need to do a rehab job on. So this might not reflect the state on what the property you saw today is. That's why I asked you that question that did they do any reno in that property? Okay, so that will inform you on how to decide. So I'm not going to pick that property yeah. just for the simple reason that it's a little bit far out. And I mean, 95000 as opposed to something like that they want to sell for one sixty five. I mean, there's got to be a reason for that. Mm -hmm. We can go to the next one again, very identical property, and you can see the picture on the next one. You know that that looks like that was done up as well. So this yeah. probably compares more favorably to your property. It was sold. It was sold. You know, three months, four months ago, but at least it's still close to where your pricing is for what you buy for what you're trying to buy right now, and you can tell that it was done up. So I'll pick that. But I'll bear in the back of my head that this property is slightly smaller. smaller. Mm -hmm. It's slightly smaller, but it's still a good sampling for where we're going. I'm going to skip the next one. I'm not going to pick the next one, even though it looks like it's been renoed, but it's 1949. You're talking 20 years, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I won't pick that. I, I love this next one, the 127, which is only about, you know, half a mile away, less than half a mile away. I like that one to pick, even though it's also, you know, five months ago almost, and it's a lot smaller, even though it's a four bedroom, two bath. I'll pick that, you know, I'll pick it just because, because you can adjust up, you know, so I'll pick that. I think that's a good one. Now let's go a little bit more. Uh, this one that was built in 1931, is actually very close. Three bedrooms, two bath, exactly like yours. I'll pick that one. Now, I typically tend to pick no more than three properties in your soul. 
So you want to keep it, you know, you want to condense it. But uh, going back down here, now it looks like we may even find properties that are a little bit more reflective of yours that you're trying to do now. So let me go down a little bit, just say something. Okay, they're going, yeah, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm actually going to remove this one that is a four bedroom, two bath that was built in 29, that is 155. I'm going to remove that and I'm actually going to pick this right here, the one that is built in 1931. No, actually I'm gonna pick the one that is 1929, mm -hmm. the 96 North Dundalk. Again, very close, it's slightly smaller, but again, in the price range, smaller, everything is about the same. It sold for 165, but mm -hmm. smaller, and it sold for to go for that price. So mm -hmm. now we've gotten three properties in our sold section. Now let's go to what's for sale and pending. And then we're gonna apply the same logic again. The first one that jumps out, the very first one on the top of the list, I'm not picking that because it's 1918. You know, that one was, you know, 1918 is much smaller. Look at the living area, 960 yeah. square foot. That's not really small. I mean, we're dealing with a property that is 1200 square foot. So I'm not, I'm not going to pick that. But we, we can pick the next one, 32, 33 Dundalk. That one was sold in September. No, sorry. That one actually has been on the market for 48 days and it went under contract in September. So they should be closing very soon. Mm -hmm. That's more reflective. It's a four bedroom, three bath, smaller than our subject property, but still very close in the range. So I'll pick that one. The next one I can is also pending. We could pick this one. Um, it's about the same size. It's about the same size as our subject property, and it's three years. I mean, th three bedrooms, two bath. We could pick that. You know, that's a that's a, a good one to pick. So now we've got two. Because 1913, sorry, 1919, 1929, still within the 10 year range. So I'll pick that. Then we need one more. And um, going down 1939, 1929, this could be the one right here. This one in 20 York, York Way, Baltimore. So you, you get the idea. The idea is getting some that is very close, very similar. So now you have. Three. So I've got one that is for sale, and I've got yeah, two that's supposed to see that one tonight, but they it's on hold for some reason. Okay, so that again informs you because now you're in the same bracket, right? Of what you're looking at. So now we've gotten all of our six properties, right? We've got three sold comps, and you need three pending or for sale comps as well. So we got six. So you go at the bottom, you click update valuation and close. Once you do that, it tells you, you see my next screen says six comps, you can edit. So if you want to, once it's, so those six comps, you know, I mean, sorry, we're not going to edit because that's what we have. That's what we just finished and we picked. The next thing is now you need to make your adjustments. This is where you can really get into, you know, details. And, but I'm not going to get into too much details because you're not an appraiser. You need to take a CMA class, but you, you know, even when you take a CMA class, don't get bogged down by trying to be so, you know, be an appraiser. I want everything to be perfect and make sure, no. This is just an assumption. It's a good guide for you to get a good grip of what's going on in the market, okay? So you don't want to, you know, bog things down too much, but at least it gives you an idea of what is really going on. You can make adjustments for, you know, when you look at your subject property on the left side, you see, you look all across the board. Okay, everything is about similar, similar, all everything. So there's really no need. If you're going to make any adjustments, you can make adjustments in the, the living area, but there's really not much to make an adjustment for over there because they're all pretty close and pretty similar. So all across the board on all your sales, you're good. Then when you come down, you can go to the next screen to again, do the same thing, just to see if there's anything that is out of whack, you know, on everything. If, if you're making an adjustment, for example, again, look at your subject property 6732. On this page, the first one is a four bedroom as opposed to a three bedroom, right? That's the only odd one out, but in the range. You can make an adjustment for that, but why, why do that? There's no need to, right? 
because you, you're still an average, you're a very good average. So you go all the way down and it tells you at the bottom, the, the weight, the weighting of the, of the comps. So everything is well weighted, is well balanced. You're in a good range. So just update your valuation and close. Right off the bat, this tells you that you, you, you're looking at about 173. The, the valuation on that property is about 173. So that tells me that you still got $10,000 room, pretty much, because this ain't for 165, right? Yes. 164, okay, so you got about eight, $9,000. So the next thing you do is just create the report. What I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna create this report. What I do, that's, once you set this whole thing up, you know, you can send this to your client. So what I'm gonna do for you is, I'm going to send it to you. And then you, if you want to, you can share with your client because this is the way I do things to write offers for my client. So I'm just gonna put this under your name, Perry. And um, I will usually put a message on there, you know, in the middle, something like, you know, this is a rough estimate. This is the, um, the comparative market analysis for this property based on similar properties. Valuation is about 173. It could be more, it could be a little bit less. You know, and based on this number and based on what the market is, I will say, if we want to make an offer, we can write an offer up to about 173, 175. Based on the market, how competitive it is, we can go higher or whatever the case is. It, it just depends on how we're informing the client, what they feel comfortable with, you know. But, you know, I'll just put average 175 or whatever, you know, based on, you know, your client, you know, your interaction with them, and then I'll email it to them. So I'm gonna email it to you. So in case you do decide that you wanna, you know, share with your client to let them know how or why you came up with a number of what you're gonna advise them to write an offer for, this is why. These are the facts. I didn't make it up. It's just based on what the facts are. So your email is perry.darden at exprealty.com, right? Yes. Okay, so boom. So it's going to generate the report and it's going to send it to you. You're going to get that report in about three or four, four minutes in your email. So that's it, done. But you're going to see my picture on that report when you get it. That's why it's important for you to set this up. You know, when you, yes, when you go in your PR, make sure you set it up, have your picture on there, have all that good, good stuff on there and you're good to go. So now that goes the report. So that, so to answer your question, we did all that long process to be able to come to this that, how do you advise your client to write an offer? What should they be writing an offer on? How hot is that market? How many people, when you, so these are the things that you get a feel for. When you went to show the property, for example, today, how many business cards did you see? How many people were waiting outside? How hot do you think the market, how desirable do you think that property is? How quickly do you have a feel for that that property will probably you know, be sold? How long has it been in the market? You know, these are all the things that at the back of your mind could inform you on the urgency of the moment and what's going on in your market. So how many, how many business cards did you see in there, for example? None. None, okay. Did you call the agent to just get a feel to see, you know? I have not called the agent yet. No, I have not. Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to call the agent because this is training, you know, as a mentor. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely training. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am following you. I'm hearing everything. I'm taking notes. I'm doing everything. So, yes. Good. Do you have the agent's phone number? If uh, Let me look it up. 6732 Woodley. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I yeah, I was about to give it to you. Okay. That, that ding that we just heard is the report ready. So, 6732 Woodley, right? Okay. Looks yeah. like he's the only one who came up. So, I'm going to call the agent and I'm going to let you just listen in on my conversation. Sounds good. So let's do this. 410-515-0900. Hopefully it will pick up. It's 923. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Sure. Thank 
Hi, you have reached the office of Tom Roach and Patska Rupa. We are either on the other line or currently out of the office. However, your call is very important to us. At the tone, please leave your name and number, and we will return your call as soon as possible. Thanks for calling. Hey, Tom, this is Jimmy, Jimmy Okanola, AXP Realty. I know it's late, Saturday night, but I'm so, sorry that I'm bothering you, but I wanted to find out real quick on 6732 Woodley Road, if you have any um, offer in hand right now. My client's kind of like excited about it, so I'm thinking about writing an offer, but I want to, you know, get you the winning offer, make this happen for your client and for mine. So um, give me a call back, um, 240-515-1068. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Thank you much. Bye-bye. So because that's a gener generic inbox, it's probably never going to, you know, um, because I'm looking on the MLS, all the number they have in there is just the office number. Gotcha. So, so, yeah, we may never get a phone call back. But that's kind of like the way I lead. That's kind of like the way my conversation goes. You, you make him feel good. You tell me, hey, I'm my good, an excited client. Hey, maybe we can make something happen. Give me an idea. So that's kind of like, that, that. that's your approach. Now, again, I'm looking on the remarks on here in the MLS. It says back on the market on October 28th. So he just came back on the market. So something yes. happened. So this fell through for whatever reason. And I'm trying to see there's nothing else in here that tells no, me. No, I read that and I saw that. I did read that. I was going to tell you that, but yep. Okay. But the other thing that you need to pay attention to on this is this. And these are part of the reasons why you got to advise a client to be aggressive in their approach, just based on what I'm looking at. It says they have a brand new resurfaced roof with a 10 year warranty on there. It's, it seems like it's in a very desirable area. So the neighborhood, we've got restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So it, it appears that this is, you know, a property that a lot of people would, you know, We'll, we'll, we'll go for. Again, the reason why you probably didn't have any uh, business cards in there because it just came back on the market as well. Okay. That could be a reason. But now, I've been knowing all of this now, knowing you know it's uh, it probably will appraise for one seventy three or more, probably you know at least we know what the comp says. I will advise my client that we should write a you know an aggressive offer an offer, if they love the house, if they absolutely want the house, if that's the house that they think is the right one for them, let's be aggressive. Next question is, do they need closing help? Yes. So so um, I will tell you this. They love the house. Both of them, they lo absolutely love the house. Um, they saw one around the corner that cost a little bit more, but they were still, the fact that this one was under budget and, you know, almost the same, similar layout, all that, a little bit bigger. They were in love, even though it didn't have air in it, they didn't care. They loved this house. This was their number one pick. And yes, they need closing help as well. So they are going through the Maryland Mortgage Program for a $5,000 closing cost, uh, closing help. Uh, talk to the, um, I talked to the uh, the broker. Um, she's, she's working with them on that and they're first time home buyers. So definitely want to get some closing costs so they don't have to come out of pocket as much as, you know, as much as possible. Okay, but do they need, do they need closing help from the seller or are they getting that closing help from? They, uh, the they both, 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 yes, both. Okay, Yes. all right. Um, what kind of a loan is this, FHA? FHA. Okay. Uh, so on an FHA, you can get up to 4%. Don't ever, you know, get four because most sellers will not, you know, they just won't give it to you, you know. But so this is what my recommendation is going to be. Can you, what, what, which of my screens are you seeing? You can see my MLS screen. Is that what you're saying? MLS. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, all right. Based on what we know so far, my recommendation is we write a top dollar offer. I'll say they're asking 165 you see that it can go up to 173. I'll say, right, if the client is willing to do it, especially if you want to ask for you know, closing help, I'll say, write that offer at 173. Again, just because of the market. I'll write an offer at 173 and ask for the full 3%. So 173 times 3% is going to be about $5,200, right? 
So you can just, you can actually write it at 173 and that's for $5,000. So it just looks, you know, round, you know, that would be my recommendation to your client because at 173 minus the 5,000, it will be at 168. You're basically offering the seller about $3,000 more than what they're asking for. Sellers will look at the bottom line. That's what they're looking at. Hopefully it will win the offer. Again, I don't know how competitive it is in Baltimore right now. It's still competitive. I mean, I've heard, I've talked to other realtors and they're actually going, let's say they go 10, 10, 15 above cost and asking for 10 back. I mean, they're asking for like the full six back, like the full 6% for FHA that they can get back from, they're asking for it. And they're getting a lot of them off. Okay, then if that's what you want to do, then you can go that way, you know. But you know, it's again up to you how you approach it. Right. Offers that I'm writing over here, um, in Bowie, in Mitchellville, and Upper Marlboro, I'm thirty, forty thousand dollars above ask, yeah, and I've some heard. of them, I'm still not getting it, even at thirty, forty thousand dollars. I've had oh, to write I've offers heard. at fifty percent over to get it. But I'm going to show you another thing that you can do, you know, to still protect your client. So that's a conversation you need to have with your client, depending on how much they love the house. In a regular ideal world, I will write the offer at 173 and I'll ask for 3% back, but we're not in a regular world. So in this situation, you can go as high as 185. You can go as high as 185 and ask them for four, five, six percent. If you know, if you feel they can get this, if, they, if you, but just check with your lender as well that your client can get a full six percent, you know? Yes. So, so that would be, you know, the technical part, but I'm going to show you on our next um, um, step now on how to actually now write the winning offer and the safeguards that you can put in place to protect yourself. So now we're going to go to zip forms. Can you see my zip form screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to run through the zip forms on creating the transaction. And if you want, I can actually create this transaction for you real quick. And you can watch the video or whatever later on. I hope I'm able to send this video to you because sometimes Zoom doesn't do it, even though I, I have the service for it, but sometimes it doesn't, but hopefully it'll work. Um, so that way, at least you can get it. And I know I can move a little bit faster as well. Um, so let's create a new um, offer. Can you see my entire screen? Yep. Okay. So we're going to do a new offer. And the way I'm going to do it, actually, let me go. I'm going to, what was the address of the property? 6732? Yep. Woodley. Woodley. And it should come up. Woodley. Um, road. What is it? Woodley, Woodley road? road? Yes, road. No. Is it 32? Why is it not coming up? Okay, hold on one second. So it's Woodley Road 21222. Wood 6732 Woodley Road. Okay, that's actually I'm going to do it this way since it's not coming up. Another trick you can play is if you look at my screen, I copy the MLS. I just copy the MLS number. Yeah. You just go right here. I don't even need all that. And I want to include the property. I try to find the property and it should come up. That's the property. Use the listing. It's a residential. We can call, um, what's your client's name? Uh, one's last name is Wall, and the other one's last name is Ball, B-A-U-L. So we're going to say Wall, and say B-A-U-L? B-A-U-L, yes. Okay. So we have the property, is an active listing, and we know you're doing, we're going to do MAR forms. Yeah, I want to do MAR forms, and then I just click save. So it's going to apply a template. Most of my information is going to be on there, but you know, but this is just me to walk you through and to show you, and then you can always, you know, you know exactly what you need to do. So 
this is where you, if you were doing the yours, all of this information probably will pop up because you already have the information on there. So you go to the buy side, you put the uh, buyer one. What's the first name? Uh, Canera, K-E-N-E-R-A-H. Last name is Wall. Okay, Canera Wall. What's, can, um, I like to put the email address on there. What's the email okay. address? Canera Wall 77 at gmail.com. So we'll do that and you can put their phone number in there as well, but let's just say that. Then there are two buyers. So we we'll put the second buyer's information. What's the, what's the first name? James. B-A-U-L, last name? Yes. And email? James Ball at, I'm sorry, James Ball 23 at yahoo.com. James Ball 23 at yahoo.com. Yes. And then I'll put the phone number in there as well. We'll save that. So now you have both, both the names of the buyers in there. The seller's information would have been pulled, um, but it didn't put the name in there. So it's, that's why I say see public records. I like to go in there and make the life easy. So I go into the docs. Cause I just want, oh my gosh, this thing kicked me out. All right, so I go into the docs to try and see because I'm gonna need this information as well to bring it in. So the buyer's, the seller's name is Guy Buckles. Why is it not letting me copy? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I think it's a copy. PDF. Okay, so Guy C. Buckles Jr. So. Guy um, C. C. Buckles Jr. So we got that. Now, your service provider, if you have your lender information, you can put the buyer's lender information in there, you know, and save it. If you have a title company that you're gonna use, if you already know their name, put it in there and save it. Once all of that is done, then we go to documents. Should we have the title company before we make the offer or it doesn't matter? I will, I mean, if you have the information, why not? You know, cause this is gonna be when- Right now we don't have one, but I can, I can get one. That's, that's yeah. Not an issue. yeah, I mean, if you have it put in, if you don't, no big deal. And, you know, but at least this is just to kind of like, you know, give you an idea. Now, again, remember here, I don't have all the documents that you need because I don't have Baltimore. Okay. But this is going to give you a good idea of, you know, the things that we need. So I know what we're going to need. So the first thing I want to pull, I want to pull a cover sheet because Remember what I said, when you pull a cover sheet into any of your deals, it makes your life a whole lot easier because you can just type all the information in the cover sheet and you don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna do residential contract of sale. I'm pulling all this out of my memory because I already know, you know, the things that we need. So, but you probably go, all, all, you, need, all you need to do is just go through and um, just pull your, um, your checklist, okay? I'm using MAR forms, so I wanna use, where's my contract of sale? Oh, uh, right there. So, so yes, I'm gonna add that. Residential contract of sale, I need that. Addendum of clauses, I'm gonna put addendum of clauses in there. Uh, and I'm gonna use, I'm probably, he's probably gonna give me the identical clause of Montgomery County, which is fine. Um, yeah, so let's just add the identical clauses in there. You're gonna need, you said this is an FHA loan, right? Yes. Okay. So let me actually go into MUR. Let me see if I can find. 
and the MAR. So MAR, I'm going to put, where is it? Okay, I'm, let's pull out all the forms that we need right here. Um, I don't need to go through each one of those. Okay, we already have the cover sheet. We need, we need escrow agreement. So we're going to add the escrow agreement to it. Um, it's an FHA loan, so we're going to add the FHA addendum to it. Um, the first time own buyers, right? Yes. Okay, that's already on the, the thing that should already be there because I don't use the addendum because there's no need to, you know, because there's a place where we, you know, I select that. Um, we do know that we're going to do a home inspection. So where is my home, as property inspections addendum? So we're going to add this property inspection addendum to it because we're going to do a home inspection. We did. We do need. Um, you know, escalating on price because you just want to write a straight up offer. So we don't need that. Um, I'm looking now for all of your agency. You already have that on there because you're going to be asking the seller for some money. Let's find your seller contribution. Seller contribution. So we're going. Oh, come on. I just did found it. Okay, seller contribution. So we're gonna add that to it. Um, so we have residential contract. Let's say we have addendum of clauses. We have escrow agreement, FHA addendum, property inspection addendum, seller contribution. That really is all that I need. All the other documents that you need will be disclosures, which we're gonna have from you know from um, from the yes. MLS. Yeah, no, from the MLS actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, for your case, in in your zip forms, whatever jurisdictional forms that you need, please add it to it. You know, I just don't have, so I'm not going to be able to add it, you know, in zip forms because I don't have access to that. So, so what I do right off the bat is I come to, you know, my cover sheet. As you can see, the information we put on there, it's already on there. If I need to add anything else, we just tweak it and add it to it. We have the seller's information. Um, we have the listing broker's information, right? You're the selling broker, so we need to have your information in, the, in there. So we're just going to go Perry, Darden. Um, do you want me to send you all this one? Well, I guess I can. So let's just do it. Perry Darden. Um, do you know your um, number off the top of your head? Uh, my MLS number? Yes. No, but I can or, get it. It's right here. Or your license number. Anyone? Yes, I have. Shoot. It's upstairs. Hold on one second. Let me grab it. Okay, five zero zero two seven two zero. Five zero zero two seven zero. Two seven two zero. Two seven two zero. Okay, and what's your MLS number? Your three hundred. I think it's three something. Give me one sec. I can pull that right up right here. Some uh, as. My MLS number is, no, it's not that one. I, I have to look that one up. I don't have Which that one. Which one came up? Which one came up? One, three, is one, three, six. Hold on, Damn, it just went away, hold on. One, three, six, one, six, zero. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it either. But that's fine. You just need to you just need to put that in there. That's fine. We don't. I don't. I really don't need it. So selling agent's name. So you have to put your name here. Um, so Perry Darden, right? Mm -hmm. Then you put your your phone number. Your, you know your cell phone number. Then your email address. You know you just want to make sure. You know you put all those information on there at exprealty.com. So once you fill all those things out, you know, all this good information is in there of what you need, 
then you come down to the property information. This is where you're going to now fill out what are you what are you going to be selling the property for? I mean, sorry, what are you going to be buying the property uh, for? Uh -huh. yeah. So again, this is just this is still a conversation you have to advise a client, but I'm just going to put a number on there so that we yeah. can you know we'll be able to have something to follow. So let's say you say you, you're buying it for 175. Your purchase agreement date is the day you write in the contract. Your settlement date is when do you plan to settle? I typically go 30 days out. 45, because they, they're doing a Maryland mortgage program, so it has to be 45 days. Okay. Those could be part of the reasons where you may or may not get the offer because some agents don't, you know. So you probably don't want to show too much of your hand, especially when you're in a competitive situation, you know, because if you write the offer, the agent might be like, ah, 45 days, ah, they're using, you don't want to tell them all that they're using Maryland. They, you can find that information out by talking to your lender if you want to, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, but I'm not going to tell them any of that. Days, Sorry? Yeah, I'm just put 45 on there, yeah. Okay, you can put 45 days on there, but just remember, this could also be part of the reasons why you may have a challenging situation. They may or may not accept your offer. Again, depending on how you know, busy the, 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 the market is. Now, mm -hmm. earnest money deposit. I, as a rule of thumb, get a minimum of 1% from my client. I was going to so, tell them at least do um, 2,000, which is more than 1%. Okay, there you go. So you put that information there. So you do 2,000. Your offer date, again, is today, you know, and um, that's it. Do you put yeah. an expiration date on there at all? If you, if you want to, I don't. I Because, I, I mean, the... It's it's only if I'm in a situation where my client has got plenty of you know offers. I mean, it, it just depends on your read of the situation. You know, if if you feel that yeah, it's necessary, do that because especially let's say your client identified two or three properties and they want to know if this one's going to say yes or no. Yeah, you can put a date on there so that way you don't have them you know putting two contracts in and then they win both. So yeah, if you want to, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, but I, I, I typically don't. Um, then that's really what you do over there. But if you want to add this, like I said, you can add it on there. You don't need to put anything amount finance. Then you click on residential because that's what you're buying. And then um, what, if whoever the um, title company's information, you can put it down here. Again, it would have been in there already if you already feel We'd have put it in there previously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if not, then, then the only other thing you want to just make sure you select is what kind of financing, you know? It's FHA, so you select FHA because that's your uh, buyer's lender information. So that's it. You do all that, you click save, you circles through, it saves your information, and you go to back. Then we start filling our contracts now. So we go to residential. Everything is already pretty much filled out there. This is your client's information. Do they have a middle name or anything? You know, just make sure that all that information is correct. Right. I don't have I don't have all that, but yes, I can okay. I can get well, that. At least you get the idea. So that's yeah. the next thing now. So line one is filled out, line two is filled out, three is filled out, four is filled out, line five is where you start. The property is being conveyed in is it fee simple if it is an X. If it's not fee simple, if it's subject to annual ground rent, which in your case it may. You need to make sure that that's what you select. Okay. Okay. And part of that information, do you, can you see my new screen? Yep. Okay. So let me go to, um, I think this is it right now. That's not it. I think this is it. Yep. So can you see my, this is, the, this are the disclosures. Yeah. So you might be able to find some of that information in disclosures. Let's, look, let's run through it real quick. Let's see if he says, so they're not disclosing anything, they're just disclaiming, which is fine. Um, but let's see if there's any ground rent on here. It didn't say, uh, both more than transfer. So it was pay. okay. Notice of sewer or private. The property is, okay, the property is on the public water system, but there's nothing extra, okay. So he's basically saying that there is, okay, so, so far there is not, it's not, there's nothing that says it's on, um, that is subject to a ground rent. 
Are you subject to a deferred water bill? It says zero. So it tells us that there is nothing as far as that goes. So guess what? We, it's fee simple, right? Mm -hmm. So the estate is being conveyed in fee simple. Then you come down here. My meeting time is up, but that's fine. So let's just. Okay, let's stop that. Uh, sorry. Okay, so it's fee simple, and it says we're going to be in fee simple. Blah, blah, blah. Purchase price, he has it on there. The payment terms, he says the payment, like number seven, the payment of the purchase price shall be made by the buyer as follows An initial deposit by way of check or wire. Check or wire is what I put in there because that's your EMD. That's your earnest money deposit. Then line B, if they want to put any additional money, you put it on the B part. If there's anything additional that they want to put before you get to settlement, you put that on there. Then C where it says C, all deposits will be held in escrow by, this is where you put the escrow um, company. So I'm just going to put TBD so that you know that you need to have an escrow company, you know, stated. If you don't, you can use the sellers, but if you don't, the agent is going to ask you, you know, you want, just want to make sure you keep everything clean, you know, as best as possible. So I put TBD there for, to be determined. Do I need to reach out to the title company before I actually put it on the contract? You don't need to. I mean, if you're picking a title company that you're going to be working with, you don't need to reach out to them. They love your business. They don't care. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but once your deal is done and it's ratified, that's when you reach out to them. So I always take a non-interest bearing account, except if your client, you know, specifies that they want interest bearing. Then you click FHA, because that's where your financing is. Now, under here, see where it says buyer? That's where when you get into sky slope, that's where you're going to put the initials. Initials. So just go to, yeah. Now, financing application and commitment, depending on where you think that your client is on the financing, can inform you on this. A lot of people would usually do like 10 days, 15 days. I typically do seven to 10 days. I don't do more than that. But again, depending on what you feel your client is. So you can do 10 days and then you can do 15 days. You know, so, you, you know, because they can hold you accountable to that, you know, to make sure that within that 15 day period, you have a commitment letter, you know, from the lender. So, but again, yeah, they already have a pre approval, I already have it. Some, but there is a commitment letter that is needed. Oh, after. well, the commitment letter that comes after, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some people will do twenty days, some people will do fifteen and twenty. You know, it just depends. You know, but don't commit your client to something that could be a problem. You know, like don't do something like five days. You know, three days and five days when you know that might be an impossible situation. So you don't want to do that. So once you uh, once you get that done, young man, I'm working. You know. I'm walking, no, sorry about that. It's all good. So, I'm working. Go to babe, go to baby. See you later, bye, shut my office door. Thanks, bye. Sorry about that. So, um, um, so we missed, we, we skipped that. Line 14, I always put on the seller because if there's anything like a, a, a transfer fee or fee or some kind of taxes or anything that is not paid yet, it has to be the seller's responsibility. You don't want to leave it blank and you don't want them to put that it falls onto your buyer. So this always is incumbent on the seller to take care of that. That's the way I look at it. And that's what I put on there. So sellers sell on those two. Now, if there's over here where on 18, this is where you select anything, any other addenda or addendum, addenda is plural. So any other any addenda that is you're going to include, this is where you select it. So let's go through them. We're not doing any backup. There's no cash appraisal. Um, there's no easement. None of that stuff. Most of the things over here we don't do. You can click first time. Um, we can click first, first time mail and own by transfer and recordation tax, but I don't. And the reason why I don't, you're going to see later because you're not writing any additional addendum for that. So you don't don't even select that. You're not selecting that. 
Okay, nothing here is needed. On this side is where you need to start looking at stuff that is needed. So property inspections, yes, you are gonna do an inspection. So you wanna click that. If it's subject to ground drain, that's where you click that. But in this case, it's not. If you're doing a price escalation, you click that, you're not. S um, sale financing settlement, none of that. Seller contribution, you're asking them for money. So you click that, okay? So those two things in this case is really the most important things that you want. And you wanna make sure you click it. If you're, if, if, you know, because you know you want money from them and you're adding that addenda, you need to put that on there, all right? If there's any other addendum that is pertinent, you put it over here, okay? But that will suffice. And at times you can even get away, you know, without having to put that on there, but that will suffice. I do this because it reminds me of what I need to add, add to my folder when I'm sending it. So I don't forget anything. Then all the way down, I mean, you know, all contracts and all that. So there's nothing there. Now, I, check, I click this, check if first time Maryland owned buyer. Because they are, so make sure you click that. And that's it. Over here, you click this for the listing agent. And then you click this for you as a buyer agent because that's you, that's your information, right? So that's it. So that's it for your contract. You click save, you get out, you go to your addendum of clauses. So you are, on your addendum of clauses, again, everything is filled out up top, so you don't need to worry about none of that. But it's actually pretty good because you actually might not even need, you might not need the seller contribution now. You really might not need, need it. So we might have to go back to that contract or say and remove that information. Because on this particular addendum of sale, um, addendum of clauses, it lists it on there. It's the seller contribution. So we're gonna check that, okay? How much are we asking the seller? Do we wanna ask him percentage or we wanna ask him dollar amount? Uh, uh, dollar, I guess. Or well, percentage yeah. is fine, percentage is fine. Okay, what's the percentage you want to put on there? Just put the six for now. I can change it. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what you're doing. Now, your inspection contingency, because you are doing an inspection. So you want to tell them, my inspection contingency, be, you know, is going to expire on such and such date. How many days do you need? How many days do you want to put on there? I, as a general rule, I don't do anything less than seven days. In a competitive market, I typically will do five to seven days five to seven days, but seven days is my average in a competitive market. Um, so you can go a little bit longer. If you think you do, you can put seven days or you can put 10 days, okay? So you're basically saying that, to them that your inspection contingency will expire on the 10th day at 6 p.m., okay? Mm -hmm. And what do you wanna do as soon as that inspection goes? Do you want to have the right to negotiate or do you want to have the right to cancel? It's mm -hmm. either or, it can be both. So if your client would like the right to negotiate, so you do that, you do the negotiate. Most people want to negotiate. They don't want to walk away from a deal. So that's what you do on that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, over here, you can do all this, you know, this is if the property is an as is property. If your disclosure is saying that you're buying it as is, that's when you need to worry about this. If it's not, you don't need to worry about that, which this is not because you're doing an inspection. So it's not an as is. If your client wants to do radon inspection, click it. People have said that you can let, you can select as many as you want. You know, it's better to have it checked and your client has the opportunity to do it, you know, and if they don't want to do it, you, don't, you, you know, the seller is not going to hold your feet to the fire and say they must do it because it's you know, you selected it. You're just giving your client an opportunity if they do decide that they want to do it. It's better you select it because if you don't, and then they do decide they want to do radon, and that's the radon is a reason for you to want to either negotiate and say, no, we want to walk away. That will bite you and your client on the, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't want that because you never made that part of the contract to begin okay. with. Yeah. So it's best select it. And if they don't do it, they don't do it. But if you select it again, Make your number of this consistent with whatever you, you used in the beginning. So do everything 10-10 because you can do, do all that on the same time. 
Now, appraisal contingency, it says it, that I would never select this. And the reason why is because it tells you already here that this is not to be used for an FHO or VA. So there's no point to do that. So I'll just skip that and I'll go on. Um, you know, if you hold in the um, EMD, which we don't at EXP, so I wouldn't check that, I wouldn't worry about that. If it's a private word that they're using, then that's what you need to do because you want to make sure that, you know, that it's been tested. If there's, if you have a relationship, immediate family member on the transaction, you want to click that and disclose that and you want to make sure that you do a licensee disclosure as well. And if there's any other additional provisions or anything that you need that's going with the deal, you want to put it there. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. You save it, and then again, we get out of this. Any questions so far? No, nope. pretty forward. Then we go to the escrow agreement. Again, on the escrow agreement, it says buyer select, selection of escrow company. The buyer selects whatever the escrow company that you're going to use or your title company. So I still, I'm going to put on the TBD because you haven't decided which one yet. So that's what you put on there. And since they're doing $2,000, you put two grand on there and that's it. Or you're not holding any check or anything like that. They come all the way down here to the bottom. You put the name of the escrow company, okay? I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna fill out the ones that you need to fill out. So TBD for the name, TBD for that, because these are all the things you need. TBD for the phone number and, oops. TBD for the, oh, he's not going to let me do that. So I'm just going to do 240 because he's not going to let me do that. Then email address, TBD, I think it should let me do that. Okay, and that's it. When the escrow goes to them, they'll fill out the other part, you know, whoever collects the escrow from the, in the title company, they'll do all of that. So that's what that is for. So we click save. And again, we wait and we get out of it. Your FHA addendum, financing addendum. So make sure you always put the date on any of your addendums, okay? Or any of your addenda. So you click on that, you put that on there. Mortgage insurance premium. If there is mortgage insurance premium on the loan, you need to put it on there. You will, this information should be on your pre-approval. But just as a guesstimate for that size of property, I'm probably just gonna say, let's estimate $200 monthly. So that's about 2,400. Nobody's gonna hold you to that. It's good to be you know, as accurate as possible, but this is something between the buyer and you know the, the lender. So you can always get that information. What is their base loan amount? I'll use 175 because that's what they're buying. That typically will be their base loan amount. This will be the, the total loan amount will be what they really finance. And so by the time you remove, and that will be on your pre-approval letter as well. By the time you remove it, if they're putting 3% down and if they, you know, getting close enough or another, by the time you remove all that, tag it back in, you probably have maybe about $163,000 that they'll be financing. So that's what I put on there. On the loan program, your loan program is always gonna be 30 year fixed. It's going to be an FHA. Well, don't let me say it's always going to be. That also will be on your pre-approval. But in this instance, since it's FHA and they're not doing a, a rehab loan, it's probably going to be an FHA 30-year fixed loan. So you put it on there. The term of loan is going to be 30 years, except they're doing 15 or 20, right? Interest rate, whatever the interest rate that they've quoted your client, you can put it on there. Or you can put something higher you know, because let's say, for example, you let's say you put on their 3%. This goes two ways. Let's say you put on their 3% and then for some reason, financing situation changes or whatever the case is. And then you have to now write an addendum and tell the seller that, hey, we changed banks or something happened and now the interest rate is 5%. The seller could be like, oh, I don't know about that. Can they still afford it, you know? And also, if you put a number on there that is too high, the buyer could be like, that's not what my lender told me, you know? So you know, it could go both ways. But I, some agents will put TBD on there. I don't ever advise TBD. I, I wanna put a number on there. And as long as I explain to my client that, I don't know what your rate with your bank is, what they told you, 
if you know the rate and if you put it on there, I can put it on there and that settles that. Or let's just put a rate that you still feel comfortable. So that, that way, if anything changes, it's no longer a situation where we either have to ask the, um, the seller that something is going on, we need to change it. And then the seller gets you know, worried that can they still afford it? You know, yeah. you can put the going rate on there or whatever is on their approval is what I'll do. Now, it says buyer agrees to pay a lender origination fee. I don't know. So I always put zero. It's, you know, that's not something for us to be bogged down. Seller agrees to pay, pay a loan origination fee again, zero. It's not something for us to bog down ourselves about. It's in their financing. They figure that one out. You know, whatever the, the buyers agree to pay in financing origination loan, I don't need to disclose that or go through all that headache. Now, FHA a mandatory clause number four. This is where your appraisal is. This is your appraisal clause. So what you want to put on there is what are you buying the house for? If you're writing it for 175, that's what you want to put on here. Basically, you're saying to them that the house must appraise for 175. If the house does not appraise for 175, we're going to be negotiating. My client will end up buying it for whatever he appraises for. You know, but you don't want to put if you if you're offering 175 for the house, that's what you want to put on there. Just put it like that. If that's what you know, if you if you're going to 200 thousand, that's what you want to put on there, because you're saying to them that it must appraise for what we want to buy the house for. Mm -hmm. Then this part here it says lender required repairs. We I typically used to put, you know, anything from 500 dollars to 1500 dollars is what you want to put on here. You know. First time home buyers, put, I say put fifteen hundred dollars on there. If the, if this if the seller or the listing agent has a problem with that, they can cross it out there a thousand dollars. You know, most most agents will do a thousand bucks. But this is just basically saying that if there's a problem and the lender requires them to do any repair, this is the max that the seller is going to be held liable to to pay. And that's it. Um, make sure you put the listing agent's information on there. For that part, and you put your information on there, you know. You put your information on there, and that's it. There's no cooperating agent. End of story on that. You save it and you get out of it. So we have a bit of FHA now. Property inspections addendum. What are the things that you know we inspected? Again, it's kind of like redundant because. I used on the addendum of clauses in this show some, well, it actually it isn't, but you don't have, because um, the MER, the, uh, there's no uh, addendum of um, clauses on the MER, so that's why this, but so you put that, you put the date on there. You want to do your inspection. We select on the addendum of clauses, how many days? 10 days, right? 10 days. So we want to do a structural, which is the general. Um, inspection, put 10 days on there. I don't do mold because if there's mold, it will be obvious when you go in there, you know, except if your client says, I want to do a mold test, select that too. If you want to do environmental, select that too, whatever they want to do. They want to do radon. And again, if they do, even if they don't want to select it, and they can always opt out and say, I don't want, you know, but you, do, you can't after the fact add it to it. You can't have to fire and say, oh, now something happened. The inspector went in there and now the chimney has got an issue, but you never said we were going to do a, a chimney sweep or chimney inspection. Because this chimney inspection, this is different from, and it, it says that it's exactly different from your general inspection. Because okay. on the general inspection, they don't do a, a full chimney sweep or nothing like that. They just check for cracks and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Lead based. The property is, um, the, the, that house was built before 1978. So I'll select lead-based in case your client wants to check. They can decide that they don't want to, but it's good. Definitely, this is definitely something for them to select and say that I would recommend that they do. Yes, it costs money, but then once you check, if your client says, I don't care, I don't want to do it, that's fine. But at least you're protecting them and you're protecting yourself. So. That's why I'll do that. And if there's any other inspection, you can say what kind of inspection it is and you put the number of days on there. 
and that should be it. So again, we click save. So the idea is however many inspections that you want to protect them with, that they're willing or wanting to do, select all of them. They can choose to do it. And if they say, no, I don't care, I don't want to do it, that's fine, you can remove it. This, because we use that other addendum of clauses, right? We don't need the seller contribution any longer, okay? But if you were, if you were something that you're going to use, this is exactly what it is, you use that, and you put on there 6%, just like you said, you know, and you you put that, save it, and you're gone. I'm actually, let me check something on the addendum of clauses. I might, maybe I'll remove the addendum of clauses so I don't, no, actually, no, you don't, you don't ever want to remove that. No, let's keep that. Uh, it, it, it's up to you. You Looking at this addendum of clauses, you, really, you, you don't need the addendum of clauses. You don't need this addendum of clauses if you don't want to. But if you don't use it, you're going to have to use the um, seller contribution. So to me, I probably will not use it. Is your call because I'm keeping everything MAR forms. That's the reason why I don't want to use the identity of clauses. I see what you're saying. Yeah. No. Be and the reason is because on MAR forms, your contingencies expires at 1159. On G car forms, it expires at 6 p.m. Got it. So that's the reason why you don't want to put them. You don't want, you don't to, want to mix them. Got it. it. Makes sense. So, and, and the only thing this is giving me is the seller's credit and the inspection contingency and the rights. But negotiation. you already have the other, you have the forms for those. So we don't exactly. need it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Once I do the property inspections, we're going to negotiate anyways. That's what we're doing with this. So I'd rather, you know, use yeah. and not use the other ones. So we're good. So I'm going to remove the addendum of clauses on this. I'm just going to delete it. And off the back of my head, I believe this is all we need. Residential contract, um, let me quickly organize this in a way that is better and easier. So you want your residential contract, you want FHA addendum, you want your property inspections addendum, you want your seller contribution addendum. So I'll, I'll put them like that. So your residential, your seller contribution, your inspections addendum, um, FHA and escrow. I don't think there's anything else that we need off the top of my head. Let me see. Let me just see a checklist real quick. Because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm giving you all the correct information. So, so buyer, 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 buyer checklist. Okay. I think so for Baltimore County, which this is, I think they may have a, they may have a, um, some type of form that you we need to add, yes. but I, I'll, I can check that. You do. You do need some addendums. You do need some jurisdictional addendum forms for Baltimore County. You do, but I because I'm I don't I just don't have you don't have access on mm -hmm. zip forms. Yes, you know you will have it on your zip forms. So I'm trying to think. Yep, actually we got everything we need. I got everything for, uh, yep, I got everything I need. I don't need anything else. We don't need that. Excellent. So yeah, we don't need anything else. I have everything, I have everything that we needed. So done. So now you've filled all that out. Now let's send the information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to email it to you, but I'm also going to send it to um, Sky. Slow, so I can just you know wrap that part up for you. So we pick these forms. These are all the forms that we send in. You notice all I'm doing is the contract contribution, inspection addendum, FHA financing addendum, and the escrow. That's all I'm doing. Select all those. I click next. It's going to come to my email. Um, huh. I wish I put your email in. There. Hold on. Why do I not have your email? Should I thought it put me in there. Oh, it, oh, that's weird. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to, let me go back. Let's cancel this real quick. Let oh, you didn't. I don't think you did. Now that I just think about it. I don't yeah. think you did. 
So we have buyer. Oh, and I have my uh my my number two right here. Okay, what is it? Three 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 zero zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. Three three zero zero eight nine nine six. Okay. So I have the I have the email address here. But why did it not come up to send it to you? Hmm. Let's say, okay, here we go, parties. Why? So what does he have you here as? Yeah, selling agent and broker. Your name is here. Your license number is there. Your email is there. So why did he not? Hmm. That's kind of weird. So let's go back to documents. Let's email. I don't know why it didn't pop up, but that's interesting. Maybe because I'm doing it on the me, so it's just the system must be assuming. Yeah, um, there you go. It popped up now. Okay. So, so you're going to get this email. So it's coming to you. But I want to show you some things as well. So I'm going to use this deal. So let me just copy this email address. I'm going to drop that information into that deal. So what I do is I put it as CC my Skyslope deal that I've already created for the deal. So now I'm assuming that you created a deal in Skyslope, right? So you, you, you know how to create a deal in Skyslope or you don't? Yes. You, you, I remember so how you told me to do that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So once you create that deal, then you can get grab that email address. So I put that email address on the CC part. Then I give it a sub. Um, my subject is contract package. That's what I use for you know because I I always identify everything that I'm moving to where I'm moving it to. So then I click send. So you're gonna get the, the this whole thing that we just did. You're gonna get that packet in your email. Okay. And also, I'm going to get all that packet in Skyslope. So now I'm going to go to Skyslope. This is the deal. So let me look. Can you see my Skyslope? Yeah, Skyslope's okay. there. So I'm in my Skyslope now. Then we go into the deal. I go to Documents. And on the Documents, what I just sent in is right here. I know all of these are just my signature pictures, so I'm going to remove all of those. I'm gonna delete all of those. So this is the deal. This is the, just to check, we're gonna click on it. And this is what we sent, you see it? Yeah. So that's the information we sent. Um, you, I rename it so I can know what it is I'm looking at. I rename it to contract package, or I can just say initial, initial contract package. Okay, then I save that. Also, another thing that I'm gonna do real quick is, come on, close that. I go into the, I go back in the MLS, okay? And I go and get the, um, I get this good stuff right here, the disclosures, right? For that deal. I save the disclosure for that deal. So I'm just gonna save it now, okay? So I'm gonna save it in my folder. I'm just gonna call it, I'm just gonna call it, and I'm just gonna say um, sample. I usually will, I usually will call it the, the address, 6732 disclosures. That's what I normally do, so I don't forget. So I do 6732 disclosures. I know my computer is gonna take a while to get it, so I'm gonna save it on the, the desktop. So I save it right there. I go back into my sky slope. Then I upload the document into that deal, into the folder. So this stuff. So let's type in 67, 32 disclosures, pops up. And I save it, I upload it, and everything comes into my sky slope. See? 
Now, I now take that disclosure and the initial package and any other document that I need, for example, the other documents I'm gonna need in this is I'm assuming you may or may not have this on there already, but I, I always wanna add my wire fraud. Okay, my wire fraud advisory, I wanna add that to it, so I'll upload that. Um, what other document do I need my client to sign? That is not already on there, this is it. So I, I take wire fraud, disclosures, initial contract package, then I click on DigiSign. Following so far? Good. Okay, so I come over here, and now I'm gonna start my assigning of contract. So all of this stuff comes in. At this point also, I like to rearrange stuff. To answer your other question, which, okay, actually good. So the other forms, the other things, because you asked me, you said, what are the things that you need for your offer? You only need three things for every single offer that you write. Your earnest money deposit, your pre-approval, and your contract package. That's it. So I would have uploaded my earnest money deposit as well. And I would have uploaded my um, pre-approval letter. So, but, but what I'm going to do, just because I want, I'm going to go back, just because I want to show you the way I, when I'm on the, when I'm on the listing side, the way I want to see a deal come to me, is the way I always like to send it to the, you know, to the listing agent as well. So what I do is, so I'm going to use this deal that we're in. Uh, maybe it's not, this is not a good idea on the deal because this, I went into a rental deal. So I'm going to, let me do this. Um, let me see, EMD check. Let me see if I have someone's EMD check here. Oh, let's move this to the side. Let me see if I have an EMD, a deal that has EMD on there. Okay. So there's an EMD check here. So I'm gonna upload that EMD check. Then I'm also going to upload uh, a pre-approval letter. Cause I just wanna show you how you wanna arrange your offer, how you want them to look. So you look when they say they're like, okay, this guy, you know, is the shit. It knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So let's get him, you know, what's the guy's offer? He, he always looks good when you do it like that. Pre-approval, do I have a pre-approval letter? I'm trying to see if I can find someone's pre-approval letter. Uh, I'm trying to say uh, I should have a pre-approval letter for someone, okay. So I, I know I did save a pre-approval letter. Maybe I've just already used it. Maybe I already deleted it out of here, so. Yeah, I'll just forward you this one. No, you, you, you I'll just forward you one. Okay, because I was gonna go and pull another. No, I'll just forward you this, hold on. No, I'm about to right now, give me one sec. Okay. Give me one sec. It might take a minute for it to come. I have so much stuff running. It's okay. I'm gonna forward you this right now. Uh, wish it, wish, is it Jimmy? Jimmy.Okanola at exprealty.com. O-K-U, what is it? O-K-U-N, Jimmy.O-K-U-N-O-L-A at exprealty.com. Got it. Send it. Should be on the way. Okay. Yeah. It could take a minute. No, 
nothing has come yet. It's still pulling. Okay. That's fine. Okay, it just came through. There you go. So I'm just gonna take this. And, and one of the things that I do, I, I found so many different ways of sending a piece of document. And these are the trick that you could play. So someone just emailed you something, you don't need to download and save it into your computer. Just click on forward, right? Yeah. Give you that document. I just remove all of this stuff, right? Then again, I just put the email address of the deal that I'm working on. I put and it under like, right in there. Nice. And send it and it goes right into it. Mm. So now I can come into my, that deal, go back into documents, and momentarily we should get the pre approvals right there. So yeah. So I click my pre-approval, my EMD check, my wiring fraud, my disclosures, and my contract. Now we're gonna digi-sign this. Now we're gonna arrange it the way you want it to look. So that when it goes, oh, there's a problem with what? It did not move a document. Of course, I know what document it didn't move, the EMD check. Because sometimes an EMD check, if it comes in a JPEG form, is not gonna take it. So you have to redo it in a certain way. So let me, I have, let me use this. As good use, PDF. Yeah. So that time that you just have to, you know, redo it. So I'm gonna have an, I'm gonna pick up EMD check that is already in here, which is a PDF. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to email that to the deal and Because I want it, I want everything. I want you to see exactly the way you look, and you know, it, it, because for me, I'm visual. So, you know, things make so much of a difference to me when I see things, and that's the way I teach as well. So now I have an EMD check that just came in. So EMD check, pre-approval, wiring fraud disclosures, and initial contract. So did you sign? Everything will pop up. There shouldn't be any more errors. Perfect. So what I do is I arrange it the way the deal needs to look. EMD check is the first thing that I normally do. Now, if there's a situation where they say submit customer um, statement or anything like that, we're going to add that form to it too as well. So that might be the first thing. If the agent is anal and the agent says, I want to see, must include this page, you know, with your offer, because some agents are like that, because that's the first page, you know, like a summary page, mm -hmm. that's the first page that I put on there, you know? Okay. But if none, if none of that is the issue, then the first thing I use is I put my EMD check, then my pre-approval letter goes next. Then after that goes my contract itself. Then my disclosures goes after that and the wiring fraud is last. So that's where I send my deals. Then I go next. Then I'm the agent. I'm going to have to do some signing and stuff. So I put my name. Um, then whoever else is going to, like if it's going to the agent and things like that, I put the information here, right? But I'm going to make this something that you and I have because I want to say it to you so you can you get in your email, you open it, and you know how to get it signed. So it's going to come to you. So so you put the client's name because you can always add a new recipient, which is what I'm doing. You, you, yeah. you saw that, okay. So I put your name in there. I put your email address in there. Very dot, dot, oops. Very dot, at exprealty.com. Then I select the role for that person. In this case, I'm going to select your role as just the buyer. You know, because no, I, actually, do, do you want to sign or you just want to receive this document, right? You don't need yeah, to. Yeah, just so I can it. see it. Yeah. 
I'll put a couple of places for you for, for you to sign, but I'm just gonna call you, I'm gonna say you're the agent on the other side. So I'm just gonna say agent on the other side and you need to sign. I can change it if, if, if I don't want you to sign, I just want you to receive it, I can change it. But I'm gonna say I need you to sign because I want you to see how it, the document comes and how you need to sign it. And that's it. However many people that need to go to just select them, if you need to add someone else to it, see right there, it says new recipient, just add them to it and you click next. Then your, your folder comes. See the first thing, boom, the check. The client's check is the first thing that you see. Then you see their pre-approval that you just sent to me. You see their pre-approval, then you see the contract. And then now you can start filling out information on what you need to do, you know? So let's now say, so, so I'm gonna click signature for example, and um, so we start going wherever the signature is. Now I'm gonna do initials, or it doesn't matter. Just keep going. But this is where you put, you know, if it's an initial that your client needs to sign, you just click it like that. You can resize this to make it smaller or bigger or smaller, however you want it to be, right? Then you can move it to where you want it to stay. And if you need for two people, you do it like that. And then you click at the bottom to change to the person's name that needs to sign it or initial it. You got it? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm gonna remove those because I don't want that to be in a confusing place. We're gonna find places that we need to sign. And that's all you do all the way through. So let's go down here. Two important things I wanna show you. So the, this part you, you're gonna need to sign. So why not put this part over there? So. Um, so right here, we need a signature, right? I'm going to pretend that I'm the one that is Guy Buckles, right? So I'm going to say, there's really no way for Guy to sign, but I wanted to remove the fact that I'm going to have to do. So I'm just going to put a checkbox right here. I think there was a um, thing down there. There should be one. For seller. There's one down there for seller. I just saw it. Okay, yeah, but remember, I did not select seller. I only selected you and me, and I'm the agent. So I'm gonna, we're going to get to the part that we need, so, so we'll do that. Okay, so um, you just keep going on. Now, let's say, let's get here. Okay, first place. So this one, you know you're doing an inspection, so you want the checkbox. So you click on the checkbox, and you put your checkbox right over there. And you click it, but you're the one preparing the document, which is me in this instance, right? I'm the one preparing. So the checkbox, make sure when you're preparing it and you want them to, you know, you check that box. Don't give them the power, don't give your buyer or seller where to do that. Because if you do, when they sign it and they check it, you have to come back again and do another check. check box. Sign. Yeah. So, so make sure you assign the check for yourself. Okay. So you assign that to yourself. They're doing um, radon, the same thing. Assign it to yourself. They're doing, okay. So that's it, that's it, that's it. See, now, see right here, you're doing um, an inspection with the right to either terminate or a right to negotiate. But again, over here, you want to, you want your buyers to select this right here. It gives them a general right to terminate if there's any issue with the inspection. But if the seller does not initial that, you know, it's they want to negotiate, it's mute. But you, you still have power to be able to, you know, negotiate. But if your client absolutely wants to walk away from a deal, this is where you want to make sure that you get them to initial the buyer section in there. So assign everything, assign everything, you know, that needs to be assigned. And then you keep going. Let's say you want to write something. Let's say you change your mind on something. Let's say over here, you don't want to do, maybe I don't let me use that example because I don't want to confuse you with that, but let's keep going. But let's say now you want to write them, right? In any of these boxes. You click on writable. You check the box where you want to write. Again, you can minimize it, change it, make it big, elongate, whatever you want to do, right? 
you can do that, okay? And then you leave it there and then you write. But let's assign the signatures. So right here, I'm assigning a signature to you because you're the buyer's agent. I need you to sign. So that'll be the place you're gonna sign. Then I'm gonna assign this one to me. Um, where is the other agent? Listing agent. I wanna assign this one to me and I'm gonna change it to myself. So that, that way I can send this contract to you now and we're done. So I've assigned one to myself, I've assigned one to you. That's it. Um, you wanna write something. Let's say, oh, you forgot. There's the two sellers, it's not one. Click on writable, click on, oh, they, they, they three, they three buyers. You know, whatever, just put it over here, bring that right next to it, minimize, make it smaller a little bit and bring it right down next to it. And then you can write over here, just, but make sure you assign it to yourself. You just you know, say, and Esquire, you know, it doesn't matter, just do that, right? Let's say you decide that you wanna cross out a name out of one of these people, you can do the same thing. You can put it right there, you know, or you can make it bigger. You can get that one out and you can make this bigger. You can put it right here and extend this, right? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to remove this person, all you gotta do is just over their name and just do X's over there, right? You see that? Mm -hmm. So all you gotta do is just move this as best as you can right there and you can just tap X and now you've gotten rid of their name. See it? Yeah. So very easy and if you want to write, you can, uh, you can go all the way, you know, and then you can start your writing, you know, right there, you know. So boom, that's done. And that's pretty much it. Every single thing else, everything else that you need to do, Again, if you want to write, you write. If you want to put a checkbox on there, you put a checkbox and you assign. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Now, when you get to the disclosures, one thing I recommend that you pay attention to is on stuff like this, when you know they write, I will make my client, the buyer, I'll put the initials over here. I want them to, I do want them to initial where this agent wrote something extra. I want them to initiate where he wrote something extra. The reason why I do that is because then my client is aware that there's an, a piece of information that is important. So they can say, we didn't see, we didn't read through it or whatever the case is. So that's why I do that. Okay. okay? Over here, this is other window air. I want my client to initial right next to that. So you want to do that. When you go all the way down, this is all, they, they're, not they're not disclosing anything. So that's all crossed out, so no big deal. You wanna make sure that your client initialed next here because they put NA and they initialed, get your client to also initial next to that. And then your client will sign there, okay? Mm -hmm. Over here, this is a prime example of the writables. Over here, you wanna click write, okay? You wanna put your client's name on there. What's the name of Can Canera, right? Yeah. R A H mm -hmm. Wall, comma, and then you do James, right? James mm -hmm. Wall. Yeah. You write that information on there. Boom, done. Um, you know, addendum to contract of sale. You can put the date on there. You know, so that's what you want to do. Then you get them to sign on the parts that they need to sign. You assign it to them, and you know, over here, so I used to pay all Baltimore. It says, it says the seller agrees to pay all Baltimore. Oh, good. I will, in, I will let my client, because also they initialed, right? Make sure you get your client to, to initial. They saying that it's not applicable. They saying that there is no tax that is needed. So, you know, make sure you initial that as well so your client knows, okay? Mm -hmm. So you initial that. It says no, the private uh, seller is disclosing that the property is um, served by a public sewer or water supply, and that the system is not equipped with a private sewer. 
So you need to show that as well. So that's it. You do all of that. You get you put the signatures where they need to sign. Everything is all done. The moment is all done. Everything is all done all the way to the last piece of information. Then you go back over here and you click send. You can put any notes on there. Um, please review and sign. Call me, call me with any questions or concerns, all right? As a general rule, depending on how savvy your clients are, I will, if my clients are not that savvy, I also email them this whole document in a PDF version. So they can see, they can read it before they sign, you know, the electronic one. So once I do that and I send it, it says sign now. Yes, I want to sign now. It comes up. I dub the signature for me because I'm the one preparing it to send to you. I click agree. I click on start. It's going to take me right to where I need to sign. Once it gets there or where I need to check box. I did that. So that one's done. I did that. Perfect. If it's not selected, I can click in there and select it. Assign. If I need to type anything in there, I type if I need to change anything, I can do that. If that's all done, boom, boom, done. It's going, it's in your inbox. Mm -hmm. so it's in your email, then you can get the information and then you can sign it and that's it. And like I said, if you need to send it to your client in a PDF version as well, you do that so that they can absolutely have that piece of information and review it. So that is it. Okay. And then that would have sent, once I clicked that, once I'd have clicked the seller's agent and everything, it would have went everywhere. Yes, and whenever then, you click that you send it to, they all gonna get it, yeah. Now does the seller's agent need um, to sign anywhere on any of these documents right away? No. No, so they're just receiving it. Yes. So. So what I do is when I'm sending it to the, sell, to, to the listing agent, for example, what I do is I, because not all of them are that savvy or some of them just don't like opening other files. I just send it to them, but I change it and I say for them just to receive a copy. That's what I do. Yeah, that's what I saw the drop down ahead. You can either sign or, or, or receive. receive. So yeah. once they receive it, they'll know it's an offer coming. Correct. And then I call them. I do call everyone that I send an offer to A. Hey, I sent an offer to you. Did you get it? Or I text them. You know, I say, please acknowledge, you know, even when I send that email out, I say, please acknowledge, you know, the offer. Or I text them that or I tell them, hey, hey, what's going on, Tom? I just sent you an offer. Please, you know, let me know. Did you get it? Blah, blah, blah. Let me know if there's anything, you know, because you want to always build that rapport, you know, with the client. I mean, so then, when you send, when you put your, uh, when you put the, uh, your, 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 your text in the body of that email just now, right? When you sent it, the, do do the seller do the seller's uh, agent also see that, or just the client? Yes. If I selected the information that they they're going to receive, it, they will get that as well. They will get that as well. Now, what happens is because of the way you have it set, they may not be able to, in some instances, in many instances, they may not get that folder until it's signed. Because it needs to be signed before it goes out. Correct. You know, otherwise they may receive it and they can, in some instances it will happen that they will receive it and all they get is blank. As in, you know, there's nothing signed. So, but if you put it on there that who's signing first, who's signing next, and then you all the other people, you just send they're receiving a copy, it usually will not get to them until it's signed. Makes sense. So that, that would sense. be the blank piece of information. Okay. So I think does that help? Yes, a hundred percent. Top to bottom, what you do. And I'm hoping that I can send this information to you 
or even if I can't send it to you, at least put it on my YouTube private page and then share that link with you. Okay. Okay, cool. So the first things first, I need to go on to NARRPR.com, set that up. And then the other thing I got, I think I, I'm good on the contract package part. Also, what I need with my offer is my pre-approval and my EMD, add in my wire, add in the wire disclosure. And um, it was one more thing on there. Uh, it was five things that we just sent. EMD, pre-approval, contract, disclosure. package, and disclosures, disclosures. Yeah. And then your wire and fraud. Advisory. Your wire for the advisory. Got it. Got it. So okay. That, yep, that, I have it. I'm good. I think I got it now. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm good. I just have to go in it once I send that deal. So do I create the deal in SkySoap before I send the email? Because I can email the the information to myself, and then it'll go right into the deal. Good. Yes, I would recommend that you set up a transaction in there because if you set up a transaction in SkySlope now, once you do the deal, once you create it and everything you send it, it automatically comes right back into the deal. The information that you have for your client, like, you know, like the um, agency agreement, you can transfer that right now from your docs into the deal as well. So you, you keep everything in the deal. That's what I'll recommend you do. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I think I remember how to do that at least. <laughs> it's easy. You just go to transactions and then you just click on the buyer and then you fill out that information. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I remember. I remember that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So let me know if you have any other questions, but I think that should be it. I think I got it, man. I really do. And I really appreciate your time. I know it's a little late, but um, I really appreciate it. I'm going to work on that NAR, um, NAR RPR. Um, I, I, I don't know how I let that one slip, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the, uh, the CMA that you did and I'm gonna send it to them. Right. It's my cousin. So she'll understand, you know, she knows I'm learning and everything. So I'm gonna send right. that one to her. But in the meantime, I am going to set, set that up. What do I need yeah. to set that up though? Do I need my, just my EXP information or what do I need for that? Well, once you go into NARRPR.com. Mm -hmm. He's going to ask you to create it first time in there, create an account. Okay. Okay. An account so, and you're just going to create the account with your NAR information, with your um, MLS ID number, all of that. So everything you're going to do is just your MLS information, your licensing information, you know, your, um, your license, your Maryland license number. And once you put that in there, you create the account, it's going to pull all of your information from the NAR. And then you just need to go now in there and set up your profile so you can have your people on there, you know, all of that good stuff. So, you know, he knows your market because you're already in the system. It's part of what you're already paying for. It's just going to be a lot easier for you to have that information on there. Yep. Okay. But I think the RPR, RPR is a lot easier and better, in my opinion, you know, especially. I don't care whether you knew or you've been doing this for 20 years. It's just better. It, it's easier, better, is more interactive, is more current. If you use the MLS, which is how I started and how I learned, it's good, but it could be a lot more tedious. You know, so, and it, you're in a fast paced business. You don't want to be doing, you don't want to be spending 30 minutes trying to do a CMA. You saw how quickly we were able to, if, if it wasn't that we were explaining a lot, we could have gotten that CMA done in five minutes. I mean, I'm going to, I really am going to put some videos together. And I've done a few. I'm going to put some videos together on all of these topics. I could do me a favor. In the next week or two weeks or whatever, text me the important things that you want to know, the things that you have questions about. Text me and say, Jimmy, I want to show me a video on how to set up my, uh, my RPR. Show me a video on how to do a CMA. Show me a video on how to, you know, Shoot me and say, doing the CMA, uh, doing um, a contract, uh, you know, whatever it is that your concerns, the things that you need, 
send me those things and I'll do a video and you see, I can get the video done in five to 10 or 15 minutes tops, really going through it. But I would rather do it like that and condense it. Then when you want to play, you can play it back as many times as, you know, without it dragging and, you know, throwing you on a different tangent. But you will have something that is concise that you can actually use that will be beneficial to you. So if you text me those things, I'll know the kind of videos to do for you. Okay, that'll work. Yep, I'll, I'll, I'll compile that list and I'll send it over to you. I appreciate that. Um, and also, um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, but uh, the, one thing I, the one thing I wanted to ask you, and just briefly, you can just tell me, you know, how does the, the, the uh, KV core work? If you can briefly just tell me how that works. Because I was trying to see, you know, how, I know it's leads and things like that. And I need, I actually, I, I was going to watch the video. Oh, and the Maryland contracts is coming up on the 11th. And I'm, and I'm off that day. So I will be watching that, that I will be on for that. Um, and if you can get on James, James, Jim, uh, Jim, Jim, he prefers to be called Jim because that's his Jim. name. Yeah. yeah. Jim, he actually has Maryland contract classes for, you know, so that's. Yeah. Good. And that's the one I'm going, that's the one, I think it's the next one is on November the 11th. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be on that. I had that in my phone. I have a reminders in my phone because I missed the last one because I had something to do. But anyway, I'm I'm going to that. I, I need to know yeah. that. You know what I mean? And I think it's the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday of every month or, or something like that. Some, There's yeah. also Maryland contract class in the in, in the world that just they'll go through every single thing. It's good to refresh on because new things come out that you need right. to be aware of. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But sorry, so can you just can you can you can you briefly just tell me how KV Core works? Okay, so KV Core is already in your system, but you again need to go in there and tweak it, go in there and add clients to it, because KV Core is your client resource management. That's what I think of it as. That's where everything happens, because. Once you get into KV Core, if you add a client to it or someone goes to your website or a, or a new client just comes, you can put it in there. You can put them on a drip campaign and you can set up parameters for them for houses they want to see that meets their range, whether it's in price or parameters, whether it's a number of bedrooms or whatever. And it just keeps shooting them properties uh -huh. and it engages them. And then you know they're looking and then it can send automatic information to them that I see you looking at these properties. Are you ready now? What stage are you in? Depending on how you set up your campaign, there's a lot of generic campaigns in there. You can tweak those campaigns. You can add, you can clone the campaigns, however you want, you want it to work. And you can say, okay, everybody that comes in, if they're a new client, shoot them all of this information. But it keeps giving them access and they keep seeing properties on your website. So you're top of mind. And then you can get an alert and you can now call the client and engage with them. So that's one of the things about KV Core. It's all about just managing and being on, in front of your clients all the time so that they know this is what you do. They know this is your business. They, and then you can even send things like, hey, review me, please. You know, how am I doing? Hey, I know you've been looking at properties on my website. Do you know anyone that I can help? So it's an engaging tool for your client, but also inside KV Core, you can boost properties. You can take anybody's listing in EXP, for example, and you can just shoot that out to uh, Craigslist, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn. You can shoot all those things out and then begin to, because it's all about presence and people start seeing your name start seeing, and they can, you can get leads from that. Because it's so powerful, however you send it out, you know, imagine you just send a listing out for $200,000, $500,000 or whatever, and you post it on Facebook and a bunch of people are seeing it and they're like, they click on it, it leads them right back to your website and it captures their information. And then you can start dripping them. And then you can pick up the phone if they give you the information and you can say, hey, I saw that you were looking at that. Maybe that property is gone or what's the deal with it, but is this the kind of properties you're looking for? Let me make some tweaks for you, you know, and let's find out. Do you have an agent you're working with, by the way? No, you don't. Okay, I would love to be your agent. I want to earn your trust. That's why I'm giving you this free information. And that's how you use KV Core. So you can send out a bunch of properties out. You can take a listing and you can, you know, have it on Facebook. And then you can start to boost that on Facebook. 
So it don't have to be your listening. It can be anybody's yeah. listening. Yeah. EXP Realty actually allows you to use anybody's listing in EXP. Oh, in EXP. Correct. So okay. if you're going to KB call any of those listings, you can send them out. Nobody knows that it's not yours. Got because it. once it's set, once you do that, I, you can create landing pages. You can create, create squeeze pages. Once that information goes out, all they see is you. When they click it, all it does is bring them back to your website. Got it. Absolutely. Makes sense. I yeah. appreciate that. I'm going to watch the video. I got to commit some time to that. I think mm -hmm. um, the next day I'm off, that's what I'm going to do. That's my next, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm look at that one. But um, okay. yeah, but I appreciate that. No worries. Take it easy, sir. All right. Good. Good night, man. I appreciate it. Good night. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, yeah.